Uh, good morning, friend. Welcome once again. Uh, today we'll be discussing uh, micro irrigation system. Last time we have talked about uh, we had an introduction of drip irrigation system. Today we'll be going towards the design preamble to design. That is, before designing a micro irrigation system or a drip irrigation system, what are the basic considerations that we have to take into account? So that we'll, we'll be discussing and in it we will be discussing what should be the uh, climatic requirement, soil requirement and also the uh, how to design various different parts of drip irrigation system. We won't be, uh, we'll be taking each component separately in our practical classes. Today just uh, to, uh, to let you know what are the things, design consideration, what are the things that should uh, be taken into account while designing a drip irrigation. For your, uh, uh, for uh, reminding you once again, this is a standard layout of a drip irrigation system that we have discussed in the last class. It has got one uh, water source from where water is lifted and this is made to pass through a head control unit. The head control unit consists of a pre-filter Pre-filter uh, means uh, if there is any impurities, it, it will clear those type of filters and this is prerequisite, especially if the river is the water source if or if the bore well is the water source, if there is possibility of sand or silt coming into the system, then we go for this pre-filter and here the pre-filter is hydrocyclone filter. Although it is not mandatory, but if we keep it, uh, keep the pre-filter, it would be very good for the system and for its life. Then it goes to the filtration unit where the uh, where we have the media filter. Then uh, filtration is uh, completed in two parts: primary filter, that is media filter, and secondary filter, that is the screen filter. And before that, there is a fertigation unit. If we we have already discussed last time that uh, the full benefit of drip irrigation system cannot be realized if we don't uh, you know, provide administer fertigation or fertilizer along with it. So for this we have venturi or fertigation tank. This all we have learned in the last class just to remind you once again. Then the clean water after passing through this screen filter goes into your system which is which consists of different sizes of PVC and LLDP pipes. PVC pipe for lateral, uh, your uh, main and submain and lateral pipe which is the uh, smallest in diameter and goes along the bed of the field maybe 25, 30, 35 meters that, uh, that is made of LLDP and under it there is you know the emitting device which we call it dripper or emitter. An emitter is two kinds, online and inline. Inline in case of vegetable or closely growing crops, and online for wide space crops like fruit crop, where we have to press in a button shaped emitter into it. So, this is a basic design of drip irrigation system. And for designing, uh, for, uh, designing a drip irrigation system, especially for drip irrigation system, we will go from part to the whole. That is, the part, uh, the last part is your emitter. First, we de design the emitter. Then we go for the main, submain, then main, and then the kind of filtration that is required. So this is the way how the design goes. This is the standard convention. Now coming to the steps, steps in planning or designing of drip irrigation system. The first step. First, we have to understand the, uh, what is the requ our requirement, what kind of crop that we are growing or what type of, what type of uh, water source that we have or what is the quality of that water that is coming out from that water source. Then accordingly we have to plan the method of irrigation. Should we go for surface irrigation or should we go for micro irrigation? And also it will depend upon type of the crop. If it is closely growing, uh, cereal crops, pulses crop or oil seed crops, then uh, sprinkler irrigation would be preferred. If it is for vegetable or fruit crops or ornamental or, you know, uh, medicinal crop which are closely grown then we can go for 
drip irrigation system. Then second is the selection of emitter. What kind of emitter is required for what what type of water uh, you know water discharge is required at each crop at the root zone. So that will decide the type of an emitter. Should we be going for 2 liter capacity emitter or 4 liter capacity emitter or in case of fruit crops 8 or 16 or 32 and also it will depend the depend upon the uh, stages of the crop if it is at a matured stage say a crop like mango if it is 5 year old orchard then the water requirement for that mango orchard would be high so accordingly we will select the type of emitter then also it will uh, the uh, selection of emitter will be contingent upon the you know the topography of the area say if it is undulating or it's going uh, down the slope or up the slope then we have to select go for pressure compensating dripper where irrespective of the undulation of the land uh, the discharge or the pressure would be more or less same so if it is a plain then we have to go for npc or non pressure compensating Then uh, next is your the length of the irrigation lines. How long should you, uh, should you, our irrigation, irrigation lateral should be placed on the bed? So how long it can give same amount of discharge without without any variation? Here we have to explain one thing which is called variation coefficient of variation. That is a ratio which gives us an idea how uniformly the water is discharging from each emitters see the for in case of a vegetable crops there would be thousands of emitters in a acre of land so how all these emitters at the same time are giving the discharge the variation you know should be the 10 20 rule the variation in discharge should not be more than 10 10 percent of the discharge from end of uh, uh, first um, far end and the head end it should not be more than 10 percent or the pressure variation should not be 20 percent accordingly the length of the laterals are decided so if the length is more then we have to go for higher diameter lateral so that the uniformity coefficient is maintained then again the plot sizes The uh, plot size is, uh, you know, when uh, the water is, you, uh, you see, is a scarce quantity. Maybe a person is having a one hectare of land, but the amount of water or the system designed is such that at the same time or simultaneously all the plots cannot be irrigated. So what we do is we do sectioning. So we divide the one hectare maybe into five, six, seven or ten sections so that according to the power availability according to the water that we have from the source we divide the sections and one section will be irrigated one time other section would be kept dry and when uh, its uh, other sections turn uh, come the other section would be uh, will, will not be irrigated so this way we can manage accordingly how uh, how which plot has to be given irrigation depending upon the power source availability or the water availability so this will also determine what size of the pipe should we be designing should we be if we have to design for the entire length entire area the size of the pipe should vary will be very we have to take higher diameter pipe for main and sub main similarly if we on the other hand if we do sectioning of the plot so the we we won't be irrigating the entire field simultaneously then some part will be irrigated accordingly the design of the pipe submain as well as lateral should be accordingly the size of the pipe will be lower and this will have a impounding effect on the cost of the system because one of the major dis disadvantage of drip irrigation system is its initial cost or initial investment if the design is proper according to a farmer's requirement according to the water availability or according to the power that is available in a particular day if it is designed accordingly then um, there is the chances of being over designed or under designed would be less if it is over designed it would be a cost burden to the farmer and if it is under designed then water would not be sufficiently delivering in each emitters no? so there should be a balance between uh, um, this the cost as well as the 
you know, materials that we are going to provide for a drip irrigation system. So, uh, design of drip irrigation system or having an idea about the design is very important. Now, next comes the design of main line and sub, sub main line as well as the main line. So, accordingly, the according to the sectioning or according to the water availability, we decide upon the you know the sizes of sub main and main lines this is if you recall it is similar to the one that we have studied for sprinkler irrigation system right there is a certain formula is like hazen williams or scobie's formula through which we decide upon the size of the pipe and its carrying capacity and there is some uh, pipe hydraulics involved in it through that formula and some some of you are also developing some software for this uh, uh, for uh, this determining the size of the pipe so this will be helpful for this uh, uh, the design of pipe for simpler uh, uh, sprinkler as well as drip is the, uh, the same formula you have to take into consideration now finally you have to decide upon the size of the pump what hp pump you have to uh, one has to you know uh, Installed so that the design discharge is available and the HP should be decided upon the discharge that is total discharge that, that is required for the field as well as the total head because you know the pressure in irrigation system is always always uh, considered in terms of column of water say some 1 kg per centimeter square square is equivalent to 10 kg of uh, 10 meter of water in a column right accordingly you have to find what is the head head there in the water source and what is the static and dynamic level of water level there and from which what depth you have to lift that would be the head, head suction head then delivery head there are many other heads so total head you have to decide based upon that the pump is decided and also very important filtration unit which is considered the heart of drip irrigation system has also have some binding on what kind of pump, what is the water source and what is the quality of water source because the quality of water source will depend uh, the, uh, uh, rather the type of filtration unit or the uh, you know the uh, uh, capacity of the filtration unit will be decided by the quality of water that is coming from your source. Now uh, each farm, each field is different if you go for a blanket recommendation that no for one hectare or one acre this this is the pipe this is the quantity of pipe this is the bill of the material that is not relevant and that is one of the major hindrance which is happening in repetition system especially subsidy based repetition system because government has decided for a model field this this is the amount this is the size of pipe required this is the amount of pipe required this is the amount of laterals required and this is the uh, uh, you know the quality or the specification of the materials required but in farmers field may vary a farmer field may not necessarily be a, a square field it could be a l shaped it could be a irregular field it could be a circular field so anything can happen so the as a, as you stitch a coat the tailor will take the measurement like uh, it should not be oversized it should not be undersized both in both cases it will look bad so similarly a good design engineer will have to will will be uh, um, you know uh, measuring the exact quantity what is required for your particular field that in other words the um, things which are the design is tailor-made for a particular case case to case it may vary so what are the data required for before installing a drip, drip irrigation system first of all you need to know what is the land available what are the uh, land details of the farmers it will include its area what is the future development if if they are going to install how can they escalate how can they in, increase the area if there is scope for future development then the topography of the land is it plain is it undulating this this kind of information has to be in there because this information will decide the what kind of system for a particular case we have to install and also important is power availability how much power what is the source of power is it 
electricity, is it diesel, is it solar energy, then uh, what is its availability in a day, how many hours power is available. Accordingly, we have to match the requirement. And also one more thing, the buying capacity of the farmer. It's not re uh, relevant that um, it's the mat uh, material that we give uh, very sophisticated inst uh, instruments to a farmer who is not capable of buying. So instead we should, according to his buying capacity, we have to fix what are the, if there is a cheaper option, we have to go for cheaper uh, instruments or cheaper materials. We have to, rather we have to cut the cost. And that is one of the main tenant of any engineer. You should always try to cut the cost. Technology would be there, but is it suitable for that particular farmer who is not able to pay it? So this question should always be there in one's mind. Second is the climatic requirement. Climatic requirement, as you know, there are many things, temperature, relative humidity, you know, uh, peak evaporation data, your rainfall data. This has to be handy with you because water requirement of a particular crop for a particular season will depend upon the climatic requirement, especially the evapotranspiration. This data should be there with you or the average of such data should be made available from some institutes like agriculture universities or through some block offices which, which uh, uh, maintain such type of data. Third is the crop data that one has to generate from the farmer. This all the information could be done through participatory rural appraisal or through some theoretical knowledge or the person should uh, use their own uh, skill or own uh, intuition for finding such type of data. Like what should be the plant type, what, which crop are you going, one is growing and what variety, what should be row to row and space, plant to plant distance and this is very important. For a drip lateral, drip irrigation system, we provide water to the root zone. So the, we have uh, the lateral which is there, this goes to up to the length to which the crop is growing, maybe 30 meters. The bed that we have prepared from the sub-main, it will go to 20, 30, 40, 50 meters. So uh, in, in the lateral, we, have, we fix the emitter or it, is, it comes factory fitted. So what should be the, what is the spacing? And the spacing of your emitter should match with, more or less match with the plant population, the spacing between two crops or two rows. So we, it is very imperative, very important to know what is the spacing between two plants and what is the spacing between two rows. And also second most important thing is that you have to understand the root, rooting pattern. Like if we apply drip irrigation system, the water moisture spread would be something like conical or uh, it would be bulb shaped. So what should be the, if the, um, there won't be any point if we go for a, a, a dripper, uh, we'll put one dripper and it, 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 it does not go into uh, to the depth and uh, the main root, root hairs are within 20, 30 centimeters. So the water, soil moisture should reach the crop root zone. Now, next is the soil data, that is texture, depth. Uh, and uh, uh, physical and chemical properties of the soil, especially NPK, organic carbon, uh, this information sh should be there with the farmer. And also the water quality is very important. The water source through which you are providing irrigation, the quality of the water should be, should match with the irrigation quality of water. Then uh, is um, uh, then the water source detail is very important. What is the if uh, what is is it saline so uh, saline water or what is the t, uh, you know uh, electrical conductivity or ph of the water that will depend and th that will decide the clogging if it is salty water brackish water or you know saline water what will happen is this salt will get deposited in the emitters which has a very narrow flow path so th this will clog the system if there is such type of thing you have to remedial measure has to be done so, so what is the water source, what is the static and dynamic level, like if the, you know, open well is your source of water, what is the water table there, that would be the static level. Once you pump the water, the water table is bound to decrease, that is your 
dynamic level so what is this so pumping test or recuperation test is very important in terms of engineering uh, uh, terminologies so this static level and dynamic level and what is the quality and the quantum of water so how, how how much is the water available and what is the quality that which we have decided uh, talked about then and this water quality i have uh, repeating again there this water quality will decide the type of filtration unit that you have to install in a drip irrigation system if water is of superior quality then there may not be requirement of a sand filter or a pre filter but if water quality is not that good then you may, you may have to go for pre filter that is hydrocyclone then primary filter then uh, or the media filter then the screen filter so this way you can also uh, uh, reduce the cost of the drip irrigation system suppose a farmer who is not very resourceful and his field does not require this type of sand filter so then there is no point of advocating sand filter if its water quality is good so this is something that one has to take into account then finally the pump what is the uh, hp of the pump which is required and hp should match with your discharge so what uh, normally 2 hp 3 hp or 5 hp and what is the amount of water that has to be carried and second mo more importantly through what depth water is being lifted so this depth head the this head discharge relationship has to be taken into uh, consideration and whenever you go to a, a pump system supplier then you have to tell the what is the head from which water has to be lifted and how much is the discharge uh, requirement because it both are related if higher the head less will be discharge less the head more will be discharge so accordingly what suits you that you have to tell the system supplier or the technical person who is going to design that drip irrigation system now coming to um, each factors individually like topography topography is important in the sense if uh, the lateral is laid along 30 40 meters and if it is plain then it's fine if it is undulating it has to go down the hill up the hill then you have to decide about what kind of emitter or, uh, uh, or dripper you have to decide should you, should you go for pressure compensating or should you go for non pressure compensating because the difference between pressure compensating and non pressure con compensating is three times and in a drip irrigation system the emitter as well as the lateral constitute 60 to 65% of the total cost because this is something which is required in large quantity because wherever your plant goes you have to take the lateral along 1 meter or 1.5 meters and at in case of vegetable crops at, at every uh, 30 40 50 cm there would be crops so you have to take the lateral along with it so um, these are the two entities lateral as well as emitters so one has to be very careful because this constitutes 60 to 65% of the cost and pc dripper is something which is three times more dear or more costly than npc or non pressure compensating uh, if there is requirement of only an npc then there is no point for going for pc so this a uh, system supplier the farmer or a technical person should be knowing otherwise the system supplier they have to increase the bill of material they will provide pc even if you don't require non pc because their their uh, in it, the margin is high so um, but it's not required for the farmer and another convention is when you have undulating or downhill slope the lateral should be laid the lateral should be laid across the slope uh, prevailing slope it should not be along the prevailing slope if it is along the prevailing slope what will happen at the head end water would be less and if it is downhill it due to gravity the pressure will pressure head will go on increasing and at the tail end you will be getting more water contrary to this if it is if the lateral goes uphill at the head at head end the water would be good but going to if climbing if lateral is climbing or flow is climbing towards the tail end then there the water would be less as a result uniformity will not be there and uh, uniform uh, water will not be discharged from each laterals and that would be a problematic second is the crop data so you have to decide what is should be the 
total length and width or the, or the or more precisely dimension of the bed the, you are going to make should it be raised bed or should it be plain that one has to decide according to the soil type as well as the rainfall stagnation situation there if there is possibility of water stagnating then you are, one has to go for raised bed and it is uh, good drainage is there then even in the plain land you can lay the laterals of course it will depend upon the type of the crop as well then uh, second thing is what should be the plant to plant and road to road spacing like what should be the uh, plant to plant or row to row this is see row to row spacing and this is plant to plant spacing and here the emitters would be there so accordingly the position of the emitter is fixed according to the uh, uh, row and uh, plant to plant spacing and uh, second one more thing if there is if uh, conditions prevail like if you have good good soil loamy type of soil and in one bed you can put two one lateral can cater to two rows if if soil is good if water uh, spread is like bulb shape then one lateral you know instead of going uh, 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 lateral laying lateral in each row we can go for paired row where uh, but uh, there is a question here that it's only suitable for loamy soil or if it is sandy or type of sand, then you have to increase the discharge so that water is spread to the entire uh, bed and both sides um, root zone is wetted and this we can utilize this for uh, reducing the cost of the system and if it is sandy type of soil there would be conical shaped uh, water front then uh, both uh, uh, the paired row will not work here you have to lay you know single row for each row of row Second is the soil analysis report. This is a very famous table for texture class analysis. What is the type of the soil one has to find out by even by physical verification you can find with if does it comes under sandy silt or loam. Accordingly you have to fix the type of lateral should it, should you go for row, paired row or single row and also the chemical analysis physical chemical analysis like uh, EC pH. N, P, K and O, C. These are the least at um, minimum requirement, soil quality requirement that one has to test and accordingly the type of filter, the type of uh, maintenance you have to do for drip irrigation. These are the different type of water sources. It could be uh, a river, it could be a pond, it could be a line pond or it could be a bore well wherever it is applicable and water quality testing should also be done so that we can decide upon the filtration unit that you are going to and these are the climatic <coughs> requirement these are from <coughs> this normally uh, farmer doesn't do it they don't do it they take it from some institute or their offices nearby they were pan evaporation as well as wind speed wind direction and temperature and relative humidity one calculates and the power sources could be electric motor uh, you know diesel engine or you know solar uh, solar voltaic power which although it, this is becoming very popular but the initial cost is very high wherever there is any scheme subsidy scheme one can go for it uh, so for deciding you have to you know for deciding the type of or quantity of water or to what up to two uh, irrigation length uh, the uh, for diesel engine for motor uh, for if it is electricity driven then one has to see at what time of the day the electricity is so power availability should have to be taken into account then this diesel engine is also very handy but the operational cost of diesel engine is very high whenever you have to uh, irrigate you have to start this diesel pump and this if it is solar voltaic there should be a battery storage uh, for designing for a design engineer some basic hydrological hydrolo uh, hydrologic behavior of water pipe flow what has to understand uh, these are pressure this is pressure we express pressure in kg per centimeter square especially in the head control unit we install pressure gauge at various points like at the inlet at the uh, place where fertigation is done then at the outlet of the fertigation and the, again at the inlet of you know uh, media filter then uh, finally at the outlet of the water system uh, head control unit at various point at least four or five five pressure gauges we have to install with the purpose is 
for drip irrigation whenever uh, uh, system supplier or dealer company claims that this emitter is giving 2 liters per hour discharge that means this 2 liter is at 1 kg per centimeter square so it is it has to be ensured that at the tail end of your field at least 1 kg per centimeter square of pressure is there and 1 kg of, uh, per centimeter square in terms of water column is 10 meter water uh, above the uh, water column so uh, for having 1 kg per centimeter square pressure or 10 meter of water column pressure head you should have uh, water coming at the inlet through pumping unit at a pressure of at least 1.5 kg per centimeter square because there would be pressure drops when there is when the system goes through the fertigation unit there should be, will be at least 0.5 kg per centimeter square pressure drop when it goes to the filtration unit the, again there would be pressure drop and also through bends and uh, uh, bends and elbows when power, water passes through it you know there is frictional losses so to combat to take into account or to factor in all this uh, uh, your loss of pressure, the pressure at the head end where the water is being pumped should be at least 1.52. If fatigation is done, then 2 kg per centimeter square, and if fatigation is not done, then one point, at least 1.5 kg per centimeter square, so that at the water uniformity would be same at all the places. If the pressure is less, what will happen? is the discharge will be instead of 2 it would be say 1.5 or 1.2 so the, the design discharge you may, may not realize then some other thing like this is uh, 1 kg is equivalent to kg per centimeter square is equivalent to 10 meter of water column if you go to uh, go for gravity drip irrigation system then we recommend that the tank that is there, there the stand uh, the stand uh, the height of the tank should be at least 10 meters then you will get uh, 1 kg per centimeter square of pressure if that is not there then you have to change the type of emitter or the laterals where at lower pressure also uh, uh, the uh, discharge would be there although in uh, it, it would be suitable for small plots so if you have 1 kg per centimeter square it can go if you have the design discharge uh, lateral of 12 mm or 16 mm it will give irrespective of the pressure it will give the same discharge these are the steps that we will be dealing uh, in the uh, our practical and uh, coming classes. The first is to uh, calculate the peak water requirement of the crop. How, because whenever we have to design drip irrigation system, we have to design at the time when water requirement is at the peak. Because you are designing uh, uh, for the peak, although it won't be required all, all the year. When, when the crop is small, the water requirement would be less or when the crop is has grown up and that too in the peak summer month when the evapotranspiration is very high maybe 10 or 12 then water uh, uh, regime it will dry up very fast then you have to provide the water so the water requirement of the crop uh, design is based upon the peak water requirement of the crop that is at the driest month and at that time when the crop matures so it is different, determined by many formulas that will uh, one formula climatological method uh, which will be uh, dealing with after some time after maybe in the next class second is the selection of drip line uh, uh, what kind of lateral should be there or what should be the dripper should be should it go should it be pressure compensating non pressure compensating and accordingly what should be the emitter and what should be the discharge from the emitter? Should we go for 2 litre or 4 litre? Be it 2 litre, 4 litre or 8 litre or 16 litre. The cost is same because the plastic material which is required will be same. All the only thing is the, it has to go through some different path. path. So whenever you have to, uh, for a design, the design engineer or the technician should be knowing which kind of dripper at what quantity is required. Third is design of submain. Um, this goes in the same line as design of you know sprinkler when we have discussed earlier so design of submain uh, what should be the we have to take into account the pressure losses and issue basically the, the design means what should be the dia of the submain and what should be the pressure rating should it should we go for class one type class two class three or class four type of pipe 
and since the load of water in submain would be lesser than main pipe the, the rating of the submain should be one class lesser than your main pipe and since main pipe design of main pipe is the pipe which carries the entire flow of water to the entire field it has to be very robust so it, the higher rating of the pipe should be there and the dia of the pipe should, will also be higher and then the design of motors motor uh, what should be the hp again it will depend upon the head and discharge and finally the bill of quantity or bill of material this is very important and this is where all the companies or the system supplier make most of the money so if you are not well informed they will over design the things and you will they will be giving a very high bill of material it is it is for your part you have to check it are they giving the right material or not right material of right quantity and right quality as well because it, the system should not be either under designed or over designed both case the farmer or the end user will be the sufferer and finally the design layout should be made How, what should be the design and where should be the uh, main line should be going where the sub main should be going so that's all from my side friends so we will be discussing the design actually when we go for the design we will be uh, discussing all these things water requirement how to uh, take the, uh, calculate the water requirement according to the season according to the plant growth stage and what should be the lateral size or uh, uh, what should be the lateral size should we be going with 12 mm or 16 mm what are the i mean what decides uh, uh, should uh, which side should we take which side should be taken like in the same way sub main sub and main and finally the um, uh, specification of the motor so i think uh, this is enough for today and i hope you'll come prepared with the design with this not not very uh, unfamiliar to you you have done it in sprinkler irrigation for drip irrigation only there is minor variation especially in the finding the crop water requirement as well as the emitter and the laterals so the, you come prepared with it and we'll be uh, dealing with it separately in the next class thank you very much thank you for watching